Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another Real Estate Podcast. My name is Kevin Thatcher, the founder and CEO here at Independence Title. That's right, your Chief Everything Officer. And I'm coming back to you with another amazing interview. As you know, I live up in the Parkland area. And this year we have election year. We have two amazing commission seats up for grabs because the previous uh, commissioners have termed out, which means they put in eight years to, to serve our amazing city. And now we have some amazing races coming up. So I want to bring to you the local uh, people that are running. And today we have Cindy Salamone. She is running for Parkland District Number 3. And the unique part about District Number 3, it's going to be the only district that is uh, going to be a race. District Number 4, there's only one person in the race. Uh, Dr. Neil Canterman. So obviously this race uh, is a unique race. It, it's going to be interesting to hear from both candidates. We'll have two interviews, one with uh, Howard, who is running against Cindy. Uh, but the interesting thing about Cindy, and I'll let her explain a little bit about her, is she is the commissioner that is endorsed by our current sitting mayor, Mayor Rich Walker, our current uh, or former vice mayor and current city commissioner, Simeon Breyer, and what I think is most important of this seat is Ken Cutler, who is the current sitting commissioner in seat number three. He's been here for eight years. He's been a resident for Parkland for, I don't know, probably since the 90s. Uh, his, his wife is a teacher in the school district, so he's very heavily involved in Parkland, and you have received his endorsement. So congratulations on those endorsements, uh, and welcome to the show today. Thank you, Kevin. Really appreciate the opportunity. So let's tell the viewers that are out here just a little bit about who Cindy is. Absolutely. So I have been in Parkland for 25 years. My husband and I discovered the city, really didn't know that much about it, Kevin, but we knew it had good schools. So we decided to move and raise our family here, um, you know, from a standpoint of registering our kids in the public school system, giving them the opportunity to attend and thrive in our schools here in Parkland. So, you know, they attended Park Trails, West Glades, and then Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. So uh, just to tell you, we have been involved in the community for a very long time, have been engaged in lots of activities. You know, I also have been um, involved a leader in Parkland and various things, the PTSO and the schools. Um, my younger daughter and I are very involved in Best Buddies, Parkland Library, Aston Gardens, our church and sports. I even coached a little bit, not my strongest suit, but I, I enjoyed it and had a lot of fun with the kids. Um, I was all about letting everybody play. It was, they were young at that point. But um, yeah, and so, you know, in addition to that, I've also been very involved in the Chamber and PAPCOR, and I had the honor of being nominated by Ken Cutler, as you said, our sitting District 3 Commissioner, to serve on the City Charter Review Board. And that was really not just an honor and privilege, but a learning, and I felt that I had a positive impact there. Um, you know, it is our municipal constitution, so it's the governing body. So having, you know, the ability to review that with my other board members and make, again, recommendations, positive impact was great. Um, and I'll just, you know, turn to the fact that, and it's, it's timely today, the 1900 building coming down, um, or I'm sorry, the 1200 building, already a long day. Uh, but my daughters are survivors of the February 18th, February 14th, 2018 tragedy. Um, you can see I little, get a little choked up with it. Um, you know, so a lot of people don't want to talk about it. I think it's important to talk about it. Of course, we're, we're never going to forget um, we have to learn from it. And one of the things that we did as a family is we united with this amazing city to heal, to build, rebuild. And I think we're all continuing to do that. And we all did that with people across the country and even the world as well. Um, and I will also say we discovered some amazing organizations that you know I supported and also supported us with Eagles Haven, Parkland Cares, JAFCO. Um, and so... I will say that, you know, one other thing is my career. I've been a lawyer for 25 plus years. I've represented individual um, small business owners. Um, so uh, corporate clients, all different types of clients representing their needs and interests. And so, so much of what I just said, um, Kevin, you know, has inspired me and really motivated me to run for this office. Um, you know, I'm not a politician by trade, but I certainly have a lot of experience with this city, the residents, as well as, you know, my career. 
Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And, and, you know, listen, having the endorsement of the mayor is, is a, a great notch on that belt for you. But I think most importantly, obviously being involved in the community, you understand our community. And that flips me to my next question, which talks a little bit about the schools. Obviously, you put your children through the Parkland schools. Uh, the person that is running against you doesn't have children in the school. He just moved to Parkland uh, about four years ago. So what is your view? And, and obviously, for the viewers watching this, I have asked both candidates the same exact question when it comes to it. But I like to hear from their point of view and obviously having kids through the school district. What is your, your view on the education system? Where do you maybe see it going uh, in, in our community? Yeah. So I would say, you know, I do think you're right, Kevin, you know, 25 years of experience living here, knowing the city, but also having two daughters that attended public school throughout high school. So I do think, you know, and all the involvement and engagement uh, really helped to understand the school system. Now it's changed. And so I have kept in touch with, you know, the PTSOs, the PTAs, trying to understand from residents what the current issues. And of course, a big piece of it is, you know, getting and building a strong relationship with the school board, the superintendent, and of course the commission. I do have a good working relationship with all the commissioners. Um, I think a foundational goal of our education has to be not just quality of education, but a safe learning environment where not just students feel safe, but also educators. And there's many ways to do that. And of course, we've made a lot of strides since, you know, the tragedy. We have Alyssa's alert, you know, and Lori Alhadeb has done so much for this community, for the schools, and of course, serves on the school board. There's also the Feist Beagle um, Guardian Program and um, Hicks and Feist Beagle Guardian Program, very important as well, that was established after the tragedy. So a lot of legislation programs that have been put in place, but our work's not done. We gotta continue to improve and get better. And part of that, you know, the commission has the ability to be a liaison, to be um, that, that communicator, that consultant between the school board and our residents and help to get things done. So I believe that I would be able to bring the people together, talk about the issues and be able to influence that. And I think some of the things that you know are really important is the proactive communication. And so we have PTSOs and we have PTAs, but I do think we need to get our parents and students and educators, as well as the school board together more to talk about issues. You know, maybe it's a council of students and some parents, you know, different from the PTSO to talk about current specific issues and get that feedback, but also to go in front of the school board, talk to the commission. Um, another thing is the Parkland Community Advisory Board plays such a huge role. Um, you know, they're an advisory board, right? It's volunteer, but they have done so much for the schools. They've also served as that conduit and they have put on, you know, great programs. They've uh, recognized outstanding students and educators just recently, right, with all the graduations. So, you know, still work to be done. Certainly, uh, we want to see some additional um, legislation come through. You know, this is a nonpartisan race. I realize that. And none of these things, safety should never be political. But, um, but those are some of my thoughts about school and supporting schools as a commissioner would. Thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, it is. And for those that are watching, it's a nonpartisan race. I see posts on social media saying, is this one a Democrat or a Republican? It doesn't matter. These are local city elections. We are we are not voting on abortion rights and all of the things that you see typically going on in, in these much higher races. This is a race about our community and about making our community a better safer, stronger environment for the next generation. And, and most of the work is done by the, the city employees. We have an amazing staff in Parkland. So, you know, you, you're a liaison between the city staff. And in this case, with the last question, the school district, uh, they're Broward County schools. Everyone thinks people move to Parkland because we have, you know, Parkland school. These right. are not Parkland schools. Exactly. These are Broward County schools. They are Broward County schools located in Parkland. You're correct. So right. Located in Parkland. Right. And you need to just be able to, which obviously by answering the question, you can see that that you are prepared to be that liaison between Broward County schools and, and the, the local city officials. So, so thank you very much. 
Um, so, so let's move on from the schools and let's talk about, you've been to some of the city commission meetings, obviously, if you're, you're endorsed by, uh, the mayor and, and former vice mayor and, and commissioners, you have a good pulse on what's going on in the community, what the, uh, pain points are within our city. So what would you say, maybe one or two, uh, issues we have in our city that, that you want to tackle should you get elected to the, uh, seat? Kevin, I'm going to answer that, but I did want to say you made a great point, and it's something that I, I have noted and said to many people is we have an amazing city staff, and it can't go unnoticed. Nancy, Suande, you know, Allison, Stephanie, more, obviously. Um, so I'm so glad you said that, because that's key, and we are really liaisons, and they do so much work, and it's a, you know, huge relationship and partnership, but to answer your question, um, you know, regarding the top issues. So, you know, first and foremost, I talked to a lot of people um, over time, but certainly since filing back in July of 2023 and, you know, making the decision to run. And first and foremost, people say generally how grateful they are to live in this beautiful, special city. And I'm thrilled to hear that because we do feel that way as well, my family and I. With that said, though, you know, there are issues. So we just talked about school safety public safety. And I think one of the things we really need to do and prioritize is first responders and educators. So we talked about you know, supporting schools, but first responders, we need to make sure that we know that in order to have the protections that we you know, have um, every day and sometimes take for granted, that we need to support our first responders in the ways that we can. And as a commissioner, I would do that. And you know, of course it's, you know, consultation across the commission, with city staff, with residents, but but that's a huge part. And I think, you know, something that comes to mind with that too, that is a consideration and I would look at is affordable housing. You know, it's a big one and it'd have to be discussed, but most of our first responders, as I talk to, you know, uh, leaders in the, and, and, you know, just all types of people in police and fire is most cannot afford to live even close to our community. And so, you know, are there options? There are what there are more things we can do to support them. And the other thing is, again, just dedicating resource because we now have the new independent and assisted living facility right over um, off of locks. We have um, Aston Gardens, of course, we've got an influx of new residents. So what does that mean? They're stretched thinner. So just, you know, dedicating the appropriate resources to first responders to ensure public safety, I think is so important. Another piece, you know, goes without saying growth and development. You know, this commission has done more, Kevin, than I have seen, uh, you know, in, in so long and not to, you know, we've had tremendous commissioners and prior mayors. And of course we had a, you know, pretty big tragedy in between. Um, but I, I would, you know, say just the growth and development and, and plans. And what I think is so important and something that I would continue to place top of mind, you know, should I be elected is that we need to be thoughtful and strategic about our planning. So we think about village in the park, you know, this com commercial development making sure it aligns with our, you know, unique nature of our city, our green space, you know, what, you know, noise and, and what does that mean? Egress and ingress of traffic and making sure that we have a smooth flow and stressful, um, stress-free traffic, hopefully it may not be immediately in the beginning, but we've got a lot of time to look at all this, but you know, that growth and development, another piece of it is, I think, um, making sure we get that feedback from residents. And that's been done very well too with the outreach meetings and um, you know, getting the feedback through different mean, ways and means. And we know that renderings of the designs of this commercial development have been impacted by recommendations of our residents and of course the commission. Um, I guess the other thing that I would say is um, really important that um, I believe with the whole growth and development that we don't build just to build, that you know we've got some land left, that we're mindful again and strategic about why, how, and, and, and I think we're doing that with the Heron Bay property. I think we've done it with the wedge, but this is also gonna be a big piece of what commissioners you know, that succeed, uh, Ken Cutler and Bob Marison are going to be, you know, definitely need to be prepared for and ready to focus on, so. Thank you very much. Um, I know I, I said it, on the, the previous interview that, you know, Bob and Ken are, are big shoes to fill mm -hmm. in our community for the reason being that 
they have been here for so long. I mean, yeah. Ken wrote a book about the history of Parkland. That's how long he's been here. So um, <laughs> yeah, there you go. So you, you have some big shoes to fill and, and live on the legacy, right? We, we always want to yeah. leave a legacy, whoever gets elected to like your thing. Um, so let's move in a little bit and talk. Obviously, it's election time and we, we still have, you know, five months till, till election time. So you're going to have to connect with the community and engage with them. What are some of the ways, you know, the community can reach out to you to engage and learn a little bit more about you and, and your position on things? And, and obviously, we've already said it, you know, one of the things that our current mayor does very well is he's a great sounding board between the residents and the city employees. He is an amazing sounding board. He knows what to say, how to say it, how to listen effectively and lead with authority, I think is great. Um, so, so tell me a little bit about that, ways the community can engage with you. Yeah, and that's so well said, Kevin, because I completely agree. And I would say, um, you know, I have been, and I mentioned it for some time, um, even before making this decision, just always talking to friends, residents about, you know, what do you see as issues? What are, what's on your mind? What's, what are concerns? What, what should we do next? And so I've definitely obviously been doing that again, since I filed and, you know, made the decision to run back in July. And um, one of the things is just being present. So, you know, many places, activities, events, farmers market, I try to, you know, go to all these places. Sometimes I go alone and I don't mind it at all because, you know, it's something I've done for years now, typically often with the family or my daughters who, you know, we are empty nesters now, my husband and I, one of the reasons I also made this decision um, to run, but, you know, making myself accessible in that way. But also I always make clear that you know, here's my cell number, here's my website, you know, and put out handouts, know that you can always come to me. This is a great interview, for example, we're having a great discussion, Kevin, but for people to want to talk about additional questions, ideas, issues in greater detail, that that is always something I'm here for. And I've had a lot of people already talk to me about, you know, different things that are on their mind, which is great. And again, I get that general grateful to live in the city, but I think this is how we might improve it or, but this really annoys me, you know, those kinds of things. So, um, and so I will continue to do this as a commissioner and I will be accessible anytime, anywhere. I think that's very important. And you made a great point about Rich. I think the other thing about our mayor Walker um, is that he's real, he's authentic and he knows that people don't want to hear or be talked at that they really want to understand and they want to hear his perspective and that he's listening to your point effectively listening to them. And that's something I believe I can do too. I don't know how to be anything other than me. And I think that that authenticity is, is real and important. Um, is people see through it. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I think the other thing is just, I really would encourage more people to join the chamber. You know how much you and I love it. And, um, you know, and small business owners, whether they're new and they don't have to be necessarily small, medium, whatever it is, but, you know, some, I don't think they really realize that benefit. And I think that's also a way to hear issues. You know, whenever I go to those chamber meetings, whether it's a breakfast or an event, listening, understanding what's important to them and, you know, and the small business owners, you know, look, locks has really impacted traffic, not just for residents generally, but for business owners. Um, and I, I, one last thing I would say is, um, I think that it would be really great to have more, you know, um, residents come to city commission meetings, or at least maybe read the minutes from the meetings. And that way, because, you know, I might mention something and they're like, I didn't know that. And I'm like, listen, you can briefly look at the agenda and see the minutes. They're not too long. There's even recordings just from an awareness perspective, but also if they really have an issue or question that they're passionate about, it's a way to educate, not that they can't come to Mayor Walker or to the commissioners, but that's also, I think, a nice way to interact. And it would be something that I would encourage residents to do in a way that would allow me to communicate with them even better and, and listen and understand. So awesome. Thank you. Yeah. It's like the, uh, HOA meetings, right? You get a special assessment for the HOA or the, the dues are going up and everyone shows up to that meeting and they're like, well, we knew nothing about it. Where were you for the last 12 meetings? We've been mm -hmm. discussing this as it's coming down the pipeline. And I think we had that same issue with locks. When they closed locks, everyone was like, 
it, it was the rug was pulled out from underneath them. It's like we've been talking about this project for years. And it's I think just finally are, getting done. Right. People are busy and it depends sometimes where you sit. You know, kids are really young and, you know, you're just maybe you're just extremely focused on the schools and that's it. But if there's other things that you're interested in and other issues or questions or ideas you have, these are ways, I think, to really, you know, kind of, again, educate, but also come to the meetings and talk about your views and, and stand up and, you know, for that three minutes. And then, you know, the commission will always make sure that it's ad addressed in one way or another. So. Absolutely. And, you know, you mentioned, but we were referenced back to uh, Mayor Rich Walker. And I think the interesting thing with him is when people ask, why are you running? It's like, because I have five kids in the school district. Yes. I'm on the baseball field and I'm on the football field. And my wife is at all the events. And, and it's a very similar story to obviously your story. And, uh, you know, so so that's the passion that you bring is the experience of having your kids in the schools and being out at all of the events and the PTA and the PTSO and all of these events, you know, bringing it together. I'll tell you a little secret. I actually dislike chambers just as a whole. I'm not a big fan of networking there. But I come to our local chamber because it's my community. It's my right. my residents. It's my neighbors. It's my city commissioner. It's community leaders. And, and that's why I'm a part of the Parkland Chamber. Uh, and it's, it's a great organization uh, with some great leadership. So I, I do enjoy going to the Parkland one. All right, let's move on to the next one, which is a topic that's near and dear to my heart. Uh, I was a former firefighter. I moved down 20 days before 9-11 from New York. So I understand first responders. I, I get goosebumps thinking about it. I have a, a passion for our first responders. Uh, I remember, so obviously you've been in Parkland for 25 years, so you remember the Hunter Green cars and the green fire trucks driving down the street. If you had a PHO sticker on the back of the car, you didn't get a ticket. Right. Told, like, don't speed again. If we see you again, we're going to uh, slap you on the wrist this time, but next time you're going to get the ticket. So things have obviously changed. We have BSO, which is amazing. Our, our police captain is unbelievable. The, the assistant captain or lieutenant, he's amazing. And, and our fire department obviously is amazing. I do ride alongs with them and, and I love them as well. Uh, what is your view on, on the future of, because residents are always asking, like, do we bring back Parkland police and fire? And, and what, are the, what do you plan to do to support the uh, first responders in our community? Yeah, I mean, you know, certainly it's hugely important. And I mentioned a few things, uh, you know, when we were a little bit ago. Um, and I also think, obviously, it all ensures public safety. And, and we are blessed to have a pretty, you know, safe community, right? But, you know, th there there's different, different issues. But, you know, I would say, um, first and foremost, I've talked to a lot of in fire and police. And I'm really honored and privileged to have the endorsement of the Police Benevolent Association. So, you know, that that was really an honor, again, and a privilege. Um, and I've met with FIRE and they'll be making their decision on endorsement um, in a, you know, some time. But regardless, I, I learned so much and perspectives that I didn't necessarily know. And of course, Kevin, you would know in, in serving in the front lines and thank you. Um, but, it, it, you know, over time, did I see the green trucks? Absolutely. Do I... Do we always have a great relationship? Absolutely. But just meeting with them one-on-one -on -one more frequently has been such a learning and I think so important to continue to do. And I know the commission does that. So um, one of the things is that consistent police presence. I want to support that. And that's part of what I was talking about before is just, you know, being stretched thin and it's not just police, it's fire. And, you know, we were talking about that with, again, you know, the, these, these new, um, uh, again, independent living, assisted living facilities, new residents, that's an important thing to focus on. I think another thing is, um, so school safety, we talked about that before, but I think it'd be great. Uh, so many of our police and fire do a lot and they are really striving. They're doing like a teen program with and trying to get that going in Parkland to get the younger generations to communicate and build relationships more with the police and fire. I think it's so huge and important. You know, they've done some of these events, they haven't got the registration that they that they thought they would or would want. And so I would really focus on trying to, you know, increase that. And I think that could be done in many ways. There's, you know, the community advisory board could help with that. There's different ways to, to get that 
awareness out there that those opportunities exist and do it in a way that resonates with the younger generations, right? You got to make it interesting to them. But I think that would make a big difference, whether it's, you know, the issues we have with bikes, the issues we have with golf carts, school threats, right? You know, what are the ramifications of that? What does that all mean and why? And, you know, so I think that's all really important. Um, I think the I would look at there's consideration of these speed cameras, right? Um, and that's in play right now. I think, you know, that's that's something that, you know, we should look at in the school zones. Um, it's again being considered. We've got some lighting that we're gonna do in North um, North University uh, near where I live, which is really important and needed. So I think that'll be great. Um, something that I learned about and read about not too, too long ago was this um, BSO Research Development and Training Center. And I thought this was really interesting, and I think it could definitely be a support to, um, you know, certainly the police like to see something for fire as well. But, you know, not only is it training and, um, you know, active shooter drills and things like that, but it's also that mental and physical support and development. And I think that was really, really cool. And also something that I would, you know, look at and say, I think that's going to bring more protections to Parkland as well. And also we could support it. Uh, and I guess maybe the last thing I would say is just all in all, we've got to keep that strong communication. The commission does such a great job with both fire and police. I don't know that I would go back or go make a change. I think it's working well, as long as we keep that communication, we dedicate the resources and we show the support. Uh, you know, that's, that's really my opinion. Awesome. Yeah, it's great. Listen, I love the the police and fire department. Obviously, there's always challenges with everything. Uh, but I, I think now with the with Captain uh, McArdle, I, I think she's fantastic to the sense she of she's approachable, kind of like our mayor. Mm -hmm. You know, she's very approachable. So when you have a challenge, you have a question, the doors open, you can walk in. And it, it wasn't that way before. And obviously, Sheriff Tony is an amazing advocate for health and wellness and and being mm -hmm. a fit smart active uh deputy and and yeah i mean he walks the talk and you know he he does his thing and and it's mm -hmm. it's fantastic so he's uh he's, he's a good good person as well so yeah i think it's great i, th I think the the always improvement obviously keeping the lines of, of communication open a um, couple more questions we, we touched on it a little bit obviously about the future development of parkland uh, so we have obviously Hendrix Farms. We don't know what's happening with that mm -hmm. yet. Uh, we have the Wedge. They have buildings going there and Locks Road and, and the Heron Bay Project. Where, where's your um, position on making sure that obviously us as a community, we can sustain the growth of what we're looking to do? Because I know that's a pain point for a lot of residents. Like we don't need all these new houses and shopping. It's just going to bring more uh, eyes on Parkland, which they want to try not to do that, but obviously we have to do it. This is what we need to do as a community. Yeah. And, and I think, again, we're doing it thoughtfully and strategically. And that is a, a mantra that I have, because if we're going to do it and there's been so much of it in the past few years, uh, you know, with the planning, and of course there's a lot yet to be done with the commercial development over in here in Bay. But I think if we continue to be mindful and we manage it in that way, that, you know, it's not going to be perfect. We're going to have some learnings, but, you know, you talked about, you know, people not necessarily want eyes on Parkland. Well, you know, I look at it more as this is the opportunity for our residents to have a place to go eat or shop or work out or whatever the case might be right in their own city, right down the street where, you know, I don't know how many times for you and your family, but we definitely have many times we're like, well, where do we want to go for dinner? Well, we prefer to go here in Parkland. Well, we've been there, we've been there. And you know, and there's great restaurants here, but we we could use some more, right? And we could use a gathering place like this village, this beautiful uh, that'll have green space. You know, the designs are showing that it will align with our, you know, the unique nature of our city, the natural, you know, tranquil characteristics that we want to keep and maintain. So, you know, I believe that as long as we continue to do that and we look at it carefully, you know, Hendrix to you, as you said, huge question mark. Um, you know, fortunately, it sounds like, you know, I've talked to the commissioners, they have a good relationship with Hendrix, you know, the family, which is, they care about Parkland. That's all awesome, but it's unincorporated Broward. It's, 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 you know, it's a huge piece. It's very close to where I live. Um, 
you know, I think it's beautiful right now. I wish it could stay that way forever, you know, just uh, agriculture and, but, you know, but it won't. And so we just have to, you know, really know that come that time, that communication has to keep going and those discussions and, you know, we're not going to really have any control, but, you know, we can certainly have sit down discussions. Um, so I would just say, and I'm being mindful of time, uh, that we're, we're a city that needs to be, um, again, remain and preserve what we have. And we're, we really need to avoid the pitfalls of some of our sister cities or others that have just overgrown. And I would argue maybe it wasn't that thoughtful, strategic and planning that we're doing so far. And I really think that we'll continue to do and I will do as a commissioner. Awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah, I live three houses away from Hendrix Farm. So that's that's a super important one for me. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's talk about you mentioned, obviously, the Chamber of Commerce a little bit. What other uh, ideas maybe would you have to help our local businesses, whether it's a brick and mortar business that is obviously has a, a shop in our city limits or maybe just a business owner that lives in Parkland just to support our business community? Yeah, and I'll be brief because I know I'm looking at the time, but, you know, I would say, yes, the chamber, you know, they're fantastic. And Kevin, you know that, but we could do more and we could do more to promote these businesses, I think. And it may not necessarily be the chamber. It could be a combination of the chamber, the commission, our community advisory board. But what about more expos, you know, small business expos where we highlight a certain type of business in a certain type of industry, you know, every month and, you know, whatever that looks like. In, in, in uh, you know, we know in farmer's market what we do, but something that is truly focused on that business or businesses within that industry. And, you know, again, I think, you know, we'd have to work through it. What does that expo look like? But it would be a way to promote. And I do think with locks and some of the other, you know, traffic issues and, and things that have come into play with that it does impact these businesses as well as residents, of course, overall. So I, I think that could be something and it could be a united effort between the commission, the chamber, and then, you know, our advisory boards. Um, I think another thing that we really could do even more is highlight businesses in a similar way. We have these great uh, well, social media, but also these media outlets, you know, tap into Parkland, right? Parkland talks. And then we have our periodicals that are sent out monthly. We have these magazines, the Parklander, Parkland Wedge. Oh, there's a lot of businesses in there. I, I love when they highlight a business in a certain industry. And I think I read those. I'm not going to tell you I read every, you know, cover to cover every single time because, you know, we're all busy. But I think if you highlight it in the right way, those are more ways to promote our small businesses. And I think every opportunity that the mayor and the commissioner commissioners get to promote and, and talk about it, they do. And I would continue to do that as a commissioner as well. Awesome. Awesome. Good stuff. All right. Two last questions. One, let's just talk about green environment. Green is the big uh, topic on it. Do you have anything to say in regard to obviously um, green initiatives with, within the city, whether it's lighting or uh, other things? Yeah, I'm passionate about it. I, you know, I think that Parkland is such so progressive, right? We heard that state of the city progress and we are pretty sophisticated. I think we should be at the forefront of this. And I think we, you know, there's more opportunities to get out there and do that. And, you know, it starts with small efforts, right? So reuse, recycle, um, reduce our waste. And we know we're working with we, uh, waste management uh, on some, you know, opportunities to do that that are coming. You're going to mean a slight increase. Um, I think that balance makes a difference for our environment. I think it also will make a difference for the aesthetics on our streets, uh, you know, with the canisters, et cetera. I won't get into me deep into that. But I also think that we could, again, kind of being that trailblazer that we could look more, we're developing, right? More energy efficiency. How can we do that when we're looking at these designs and balancing the cost? But at the end of the day, you know, are there ways to do that that promote support of the environment. We know that, you know, Florida as a state is considered ground zero for climate change, right? Sea level rise. I mean, it it really means that we have our part and, and can do some of these things. Another thing is electric vehicles. You know, how can we maybe get more infrastructure around that? Um, you know, I think uh, the, um, I'm sorry, the uh, boosting of that efficiency, but also, 
pine tree and the ranches, there's a lot of the, the plans for the drainage improvements. That's huge, right? And that is not just so important for the residents and the roads, but the drainage will be very important as well to, you know, of course, it's part of the storm, the stormwater master plan and, and key to the overall environment and our habitats and definitely necessary for the residents. So, I mean, I think there's a lot of things we can do. And again, I feel pretty strongly that we can be at the forefront of that as we are with other things. And that's something too, that I would you know talk with the commissioners about and the residents. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, drainage is big for me. I, I, I'll never forget when I bought my house in the ranches, the, I did the walkthrough, everything was fine. And then we did the closing the next day. And then when we came back, I guess we had bad rain. The entire front yard was underwater. The driveway was underwater. You had to put boots on just to get to the front of the house. It was uh, amazing to, to just see that much water there. So this drainage project beautiful. I'm happy about. Yeah. And it's such a beautiful area. It's like, we need to be able to avoid that clearly. And, you know, because there's so much about it that's so I think special too, because, you know, I grew up in the Midwest. And so to me, with the horses and just everything that it offers, that's part of what makes us parkland. So we really do need to focus on that. And we are, and that's, that's awesome. So. All right. Last and final question. This one's yeah. a, a little bit tougher because it goes to obviously your um, competitor, the one that is running against you, but I asked him the same question. You know, besides obviously a lot that we talked about, you 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 mentioned having the endorsements. But what would you think, obviously, if someone says, "Why Cindy versus Howard? What sets you apart from him? Why should they vote for you versus him?" What would be your final response to that? Yeah, so you know, it does. I think it does go back to twenty five years here, experience raising a family, experience in our schools here in Pup in Parkland, being actively involved in the communities and talking to our residents and being side by side with them, whether it's volunteering, you know, community service, supporting small businesses, organizations. And I understand there is experience um, in Lauder Hill as a commissioner. Um, I don't have, I did not serve as a commissioner in Lauder Hill. I've not served as a commissioner, but we have a lot of public officials, elected officials who have never served you know, in a political office before who have been highly successful. And I would argue have brought a fresh perspective because they have knowledge and have also educated themselves as I have on the city, the residents, the issues, the ideas, the recommendations. So I think, you know, that is definitely a piece of it. You know, I also know about leadership, not just in the community, but, you know, through my career that it's, it's been part of what I do. And I think, you know, we absolutely need leadership. We have phenomenal leadership on our commission. I think I'd bring that and as well as a unique and fresh perspective, just my background experience and also just who I am. Um, and I, I think another thing is, is, you know, I do a nice job at bringing people together and finding solutions. And I think that's really important too. You know, we know so many things in just country, our world are divisive. I think, you know, having that ability, we know that our commission does a really nice job of that too. And so working together with the commissioners and the mayor, it's, it's a nice addition. And I think I would bring value that way too. Um, and so, you know, I think overall, all of those things are the reason that my candidacy you know, should be supported. And I do welcome people to contact me. I'm welcome. I welcome discussion to talk more about my experience, about how I am prepared to serve as city commissioner for district three. I did want to say one last thing, Kevin, um, just this week, I was speaking with, with a friend, um, I would say more of an acquaintance that been to know her a little bit through the chamber, have great respect. And she said to me, you know, Cindy, do you know why I respect you and what sets you apart from others um and you know yes your opponent uh and why i'm going to vote for you and others in parkland should like you know why she said because you do you know and love parkland and you're doing it to ensure the best interest of our city and our citizens versus shopping for an office or you know just wanting to be in the political scene in the spotlight and she said you know that those pure reasons, those authentic reasons are why, you know, you're the right person. And we, I'm, you know, of course I'm summarizing what she said, but it meant a lot. And I felt like I should repeat it um, because 
it really resonated with me and I think it's true. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for, for taking the last half hour with us, uh, telling everyone obviously about your passion. You know, I can tell that you would definitely lead with your heart and you're passionate about the community. Uh, you know, again, if I had to say one thing that sets you apart and, and obviously it's that, you know, you've been in this community for 25 years and raised your children here. And I can tell you'll lead with your heart. And uh, again, it's it's not a political race. Well, I mean, it's a political race, but it's not a partisan race. It's about who is going to listen to our community and our residents and, and bring to the forefront the concerns of our community to, to keep Parkland great, right? We wanna make sure Parkland remains an amazing community. Uh, so again, thank you very much. I will put all of the contact information for those still watching this down below to listen to uh, Howard's interview and to be able to contact Cindy and make a donation to her race and uh, just connect with her and learn a little bit more about her passion and why she is serving. So Cindy, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for the time, Kevin, and the opportunity. You are very welcome. For those of you watching, thank you very much for sticking in and uh, listening to the end. Any questions, please reach out to me. If you'd love to be a guest on our show, reach out to me too. Always love to have guests on our show. So thank you all for watching. Have an amazing day. And Cindy, good luck in your race. Thank you again.